Hey, this is Bill for Sparky Channel, and I have a question from my last video, and it is, do garage door openers need to be GFCI protected? Now, this photograph is Exhibit 210.10 from the 220 NEC Handbook. And so there, there it is, but you got to stick around to hear, as Paul Harvey used to say, the rest of the story. Because you can't just slap a GFCI up here in a ceiling where it's inaccessible. Here we are at Article 210.8, Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Protection for Personnel. Ground Fault Circuit Interrupter Protection for Personnel shall be provided as required in 210.8A through F. The ground fault circuit interrupter shall be installed in a readily accessible location. So if you put a GFCI receptacle 7 to 10 feet above the ground, that's not readily accessible. Here we are at Article 210.8A, Dwelling Units. All 125 volt through 250 volt receptacles installed in the location specified in 210.8A1 through A11 and supplied by single phase branch circuits rated 150 volts or less to ground shall have ground fault circuit interrupter protection for personnel. And one is bathrooms. Two is garages, so that pertains to us here, garages and also accessory buildings that have a floor located at or below grade level, not intended as habitable rooms, and limited to storage areas, work areas, and areas of similar use. Also, there's a paragraph right below this drawing in the handbook that gives us some more information. Here is the paragraph and we're talking about GFCIs in a garage, and they say there are no exceptions. All 125 through 250 volt single phase receptacles installed in garages must provide GFCI protection for the user of appliances or other equipment regardless of where the receptacle is located in the garage. So GFCI receptacles in a garage have to be in a readily accessible location and there are no exceptions. So what can we do? One thing we can do is use a GFCI breaker for the circuit that has the receptacle that powers the garage door opener. In that case, you would just use standard receptacles in your garage and mark them with the little stickers that come with the breakers. It says GFCI protected. And then the other way you can do it is to use a GFCI receptacle like this, which is readily accessible. And then you would run your cable to this receptacle right here. And this would be a GFCI protected receptacle, not a GFCI receptacle, but a, a standard receptacle that is GFCI protected. And perhaps you'd run EMT up here like that. And then this GFCI receptacle would protect this receptacle. So that's how you do it. Either use a GFCI breaker or run a cable from an accessible GFCI to the garage door opener receptacle. To accomplish this, you would take the gold tape off of your GFCI and then you would hook your black and white wires of the cable going to the garage door opener receptacle to the load terminals of the GFCI. This video is part of what is currently a six part series. Number one in the series is about box fill calculations with new 2020 NEC changes in ground wire fill. Number two in the series is a quicker way to do box fill calculations. And number three is answering a viewer's questions about do pigtails count in the 2020 NEC calculations. Number four in the series is about replacing a receptacle with a GFCI receptacle in a busy two gang box. 
number five in the series. Once again, answered a viewer's question, and it was, do garage lights need to be protected by GFCI by 2020 NEC? And the sixth one is the one you just saw. So all of these videos after the first one came from viewer's questions. So thanks for the questions. I know I've learned a lot in this series, and I hope you have too. I'll also put links in my video description for the Spiral Bound NEC Codebook and the Hardcover NEC Handbook. Thanks. I hope this video was helpful.